This is Disneyland, the fabulous 160-acre park in Southern California. Sixty acres of this are developed into four mythical kingdoms. These are just some of the sites that ABC undertook to show a waiting nation on the world's largest live telecast. It all started when Mr. Kentner said to Mr. Disney, how about ABC televising the opening of Disneyland? Mr. Disney thought it was a fine idea, and the project and all its problems were turned over to Mr. Bob Lewin, director of TV programming, producer Sherman Marks, and Cameron Pierce, Chief Engineer of Western Division. About two months before the program, Cam Pierce, Erwin Stanton, and Harold Huntsman started their engineering survey. Just how does one go about covering the production that had been planned? For one thing, how do you set up a control room for such a gigantic undertaking? This was the solution they came up with. They decided to set up five separate control rooms, Central Control, Main Street, Frontierland, Fantasyland, and Tomorrowland, thus breaking the show into five separate remote telecasts. The next big problem was to equip these control rooms. Calls were sent out all over the nation, rounding up equipment. Getting 85,000 feet of cable, including 16,000 feet of coaxial, was no easy task in itself. Not to mention a complete network audio console 20 audio mixers, 10 PA talkback systems, 7 PA music systems. But get it, we did. It came from Chicago, New York, San Diego, Seattle, and San Francisco, just to mention a few places. And when it was all compiled, we had enough equipment for 12 complete TV stations. Much of the audio equipment was borrowed from ABC Radio, and many shows had to be pre-recorded in order to release not only the equipment needed, but the personnel as well. The outlying control rooms were set up. Each control room had its own sync system, yet each had to be interlocked with central control in order to integrate film. When switching from one area control room to another, it was necessary to switch the interlock. The central control was able to punch up pictures from area controls, just as area control punched up pictures from individual cameras. They used 40 monitors in all. Along with this, Central Control handled electrical transcriptions and film inserts for which they set up a complete film chain. And everywhere you looked, there were cables, from rooftop to rooftop, from building to building, from window to window. This was a gigantic job in itself, stringing these miles of cable around 60 acres of habited land, and just recently habited too. For many times, the technicians had to wait for a building to be completed or for a road to be paved before the cable could be strung. Some of the cameras came a long way to be in this historical telecast, and some just changed stations. There were two complete studios of equipment flown in from New York, including six cameras. There were five from San Francisco, four from NBC, two from KTTV, two from KCOP, two from CBS, and last but not least, those from KABC in Hollywood. Men as well as equipment arrived, and 29 cameras in all were used with 12 Zoomar lenses. Well, we have all the cameras we need now, but how do we move them from place to place? Thirteen hydraulic forklifts were brought in and were set about building special camera platforms and mounting them onto these lifts. The forklift operators had to be rehearsed. There was always the danger they wouldn't stop the lifts in time and pull the cables out of the cameras. These lifts gave us a great deal of mobility and speed. It also enabled us to move our cameras up and down to get shots over the heads of crowds and over obstacles. We had other uses for our forklifts too. You're witnessing a bit of Yankee ingenuity. For mobile tower shots, we brought in a Yale hydraulic beast, which was able to reach the height of 40 feet but it wasn't able to drop low enough to mount the camera. So Harold Huntsman mounted the lift, 
put the camera in his lap and was lifted up to the tower platform. And that little problem was solved. Another tower was rigged in the hub looking down Main Street. It was 60 feet high. Well, here's a nice little gadget. We called it a cage, and that's just what it was. Now, our problem here was to get a camera at a high enough angle to cover the big buildings and the huge rocket in Tomorrowland. Now, no ordinary tower would do here. So we made this cage right here on the spot and welded on a platform to hold the camera. We then brought in a 110-foot crane and hoisted away for some of the most effective shots in the whole telecast. Production meetings were held to coordinate the five separate shows from the outlying areas and combine them into one large production. Thirty of the most capable men in their fields had been called in by Bob Lewin and Ken Craig, coordinator of Western Division. These included seven directors, five assistant directors, and twelve stage managers. The production crews of the outlying areas then put together their portion of the show as a complete telecast in itself. Camera crews and TD got together to discuss camera movements. Camera braking and cable layout plans had to be made as the cameras were using a quarter of a mile of cable. We also employed 80 crowd control men to keep the expected 20,000 people out of the way of the camera and to keep cameras free. Each was assigned to an area or camera. After all the preliminary planning now, we are about to see if everything would work. The camera crew started rehearsing their moves. Each camera became a remote unit in itself, complete with cameraman, stage manager, utility men, forklift operator, and crowd control men. Reflectors were brought in to augment the fading sunlight since the telecast was to take place in the late afternoon. And now everything was in readiness in Frontierland. Cameras in position, waiting for the cue. And here come the horses, and the rehearsal is off to a good start. Well, almost. We had to stop and let the workmen through and the trucks. All the time we were trying to rehearse, the workmen were still building Disneyland. And here comes Davy Crockett, king of the wild... <laughs> and here comes our cameraman. Johnny's never going to get this shot. Another one of our small problems. So we had to call in another forklift to help him out. That's asphalt, not sand. Made it. And back to rehearsal. We did manage to get some work done in spite of all the frantic last-minute construction.
Frontierland and New Orleans weren't the only places having their problems. Main Street was having its share also. We couldn't interfere with the construction going on, and men and material and trucks kept passing through in a frantic effort to finish on time. This kept rehearsal virtually at a standstill. While in the control room, the crew sat waiting for the obstacles to be cleared. In Fantasyland, too, every place we wanted to rehearse, the area was littered with trucks and workmen. Rehearsal time was slipping away fast and still no pictures on the monitors. Even rehearsing in sequence under these conditions was impossible and timings were something to be roughly estimated. In the improvised control room, heat was something of a problem too. Not only for the men, but for the cameras in the field. They would overheat and lose their picture. This problem was solved by carrying a basket of dry ice under the blower of each camera. Meanwhile, rehearsing the camera breaks, we came up against an unusual situation. Where there had been more than enough room for the camera moves, overnight a building and a fence had been erected. Even Walt Disney, who was used to doing things on a big scale, was greatly impressed by this engineering miracle. Walter Schumann had pre-recorded all the music. There were 82 music cues in all, and the sequences to each area had to be checked. The over 90 affiliate stations carrying the show had to be notified of the commercial and station break timings. This was quite difficult, considering it was impossible to get any complete timing of the show. But just before showtime, the last preparations were being made. We were still tying together the remainder of the 57 film inserts. Two standby cameras had to be pressed into service. Communication equipment and PA systems were given a last minute check. Emergency equipment was made ready. And then, ready, Fantasyland. Frontierland. Adventureland. Main Street. Tomorrowland. Stand by. Five seconds. And here's the show. <laughs> 